Okay, it's Royce with Off Camber Industries. I just hit, disclaimer, 2,400 miles. 2,500 sounded so much better, so I apologize for the clickbait. But I wanted to do a full review on the Turbo S. There's still a lot of people that ask me, would you do it again? What model should I get? Um, am I happy with my decision? So I plan to cover that. In this video, we're gonna cover the tech that's involved in this, the reliability, my experience, my opinions, aftermarket support, and then what the competition is. So stay with me. All right, Royce, so let's get to it. Um, why'd you choose the Turbo S? There's a lot of options out there, a lot of good manufacturers, a lot of good vehicles out there, so why the Turbo S? Well, not a lot of good manufacturers for turbo cars. There's really, <laughs> honestly, there are two options, right? There's there's K&M and there's Polaris. So for me, I needed four seats. As you can see, I have a couple kids. I put little baby seats back here. There's another video for that, but for me, it was between, you know, I had to decide Polaris, K&M. Can-Am was immediately out because for me, we live by Sand Hollow. I'm out in the rocks and a 14 foot car was just a no-go. <laughs> Plus they're Canadian, so there, <laughs> there's that. No, so anyway, I chose Polaris and then even once I chose Polaris, it was like, okay, do I do the XP Turbo? I knew I wanted the Turbo, right? So it was XP Turbo or do I need long travel? And so once I decided on long travel, it was like, okay, is it velocity? Because in the Turbo S there's velocity and dynamics. And so I had to decide. And so there are several factors that go into it. All right, man. So in between, we have the, in the Turbo S category, there's the velocity and the, the dynamics edition. Why the dynamics? Okay, good question. So I've had both. I had an 18, 2018 XP Turbo. Then I had a 2019 Velocity. Had that for about a year, good machine. And then I got this the very end of 2019. So I've had it for 13 months. So the main differences between the Dynamics Edition and the Velocity would be, I'll just go front to back real quick. On the Velocity, this comes black on the Dynamics is painted. So that's just a premium feature. It comes with the Fang lights built in. That's a couple hundred bucks there. It has the ability with Ride Command, the screen inside to add cameras. So I have a front and rear camera. I'll dig into that a little bit more later. The Dynamics comes with full doors, not these ones. They come with the plastic uh, full doors from Polaris. They come with a roof, not this one again, but it comes with a roof that the Velocity doesn't. And then in the back, let's see, you've got the premium painted panel back here, as well as the center brake light. And then the main differences are going to be, well, real quick over here, right? The Velocity doesn't come with arched radius rods in the back, so these are definitely beefed up. And then the main thing is the suspension. So it's got the Fox Live Valve suspension that is controlled with the ride command. We're gonna hit that on the tech section of this video too. Yep. Okay, um, so what about the Pro XP? For me, it, it kind of falls in the same category as K&M. They are American, <laughs> bonus for them. <laughs> Um, but they're still a little bit too long for what I want. The biggest thing for me though, is I wanted long travel. After you have a long travel car, you're never going to go back. And I looked into it and to add long travel to that car, it was going to be between six and $8,000. So yeah. that's something to factor in if you're price sensitive, you know, Absolutely. you're, you're going to be spending $40,000 to get a, get a uh, pro XP as capable in my opinion, as a stock turbo S. All right, man. Well, in a little bit of a second ago, you talked about tech. Sure. Tell us all about it. Cool. Let me go on the other side. Hang up this light up here. Okay. So the tech, so this is Ride Command. It comes with, I think it's a seven inch touch screen. From here, first thing I'll show you is I put in the front camera. It doesn't come with it. It's a hundred dollar plug and play add on. Super useful. You can see my front tires here. As you guys might know, I do a lot of rock crawling. So being able to see when your tire is coming up to a ledge or coming off of something is very helpful. You also have the backup cam. It's gonna let you know if you're gonna fall off a cliff, run over your kids backing out of the garage, whatever it might be. 
Um, you've also got the, the main dashboard here. This is my favorite part though, the dynamic suspension. So I can go, so this is a firmness out of 10, one to 10. So I'm in firm mode right now, it automatically goes to 10. If you're flying through the desert, 75 miles an hour, hitting whoops, you wanna be in firm and it's gonna keep you planted. If you're in sport, it automatically goes down to three. I have to have the car on. Um, it goes down to three and then it automatically will adjust based on your speed, if you're cornering. Um, so if I'm turning a hard right, this is my steering wheel right here. If I'm turning a hard right while I'm going fast, it's gonna stiffen up the left side to keep me planted. Reverse is also true. If I jump, all of a sudden I'm in the air, all my shocks are gonna to go to 10 automatically. Super cool. This green dot will show you if you're tipping. Basically shows you your tipping point. Once you pass that third little thing, you're about to flop. <laughs> um, and, then, and then soft mode. So if you go to comfort mode, it drops everything to one, uh, which allows you to float over washboard type stuff really easy and more comfortable. Um, let's see. Anything else you think I should hit on there, Ryan? Well, I mean, I think a couple of the other upgrades too, and it's not totally tech related, but Sparco steering wheel yeah, on this model. That's um, true. I totally forgot that. That's, that's one of the other premium upgrades that, uh, yep. that we didn't hit when we were in here. But just this screen alone in the tech package, um, something to note on the newer models. This one's a 2019. Um, the newer models do have uh, integrated stereo and, and speakers in the doors from the factory. True. So something else to add. I think they started that in 2020, 2020 or 2021? Uh, 2020. So 2020, you get uh, get a sound system and some speakers, and it also has a little up antenna up here on the on the dash. So, a yep. um, little bit of extra additional added tech features that you get on the on the newer models. So, depends on if you're you know a radio guy or or not. So, right, our stuff that were required replacements, things that I had to replace, um, stock parts wise, I had. Uh, bearing in the front diff go out. I probably had the car for three months and then one day I come home and there's just oil dripping from my skid plate. That was covered under warranty, no questions asked. It was just the bearing that the input, the drive shaft input goes into. Yeah. I think it was a super easy fix, but I didn't have to do it. It was covered. Another thing, I had one of my shocks at the top, the seals was leaking and I took it in at the same time as my diff. And instead of just repairing it, they just gave me a brand new shock, no questions asked. So the warranty has been great. I feel like if anything's messed up from factory, it's gonna happen, you know, come out in the first couple of months and you'll get it covered under warranty. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can attest to the warranty too. Polaris has been awesome with right. warranty issues. Uh, had a trans issue on, on my first uh, 64 inch wide car and they took care of it, no questions asked. Right. Um, they've been, you know, beyond cool with the, with the warranty stuff and very reputable as far as fixing things um you know my car first car fell under that uh that clutch warranty and yeah. they uh they took care of all that stuff and made sure that you know everybody was safe and took the initiative to put the recall out which you know some companies they wouldn't do that so yep they'll stand behind the product i mean throw in there they gave you a 500 dollars bonus to they did yeah or a, a credit or whatever you could use on accessories just for the inconvenience so that was cool yep it was super cool um the only other thing i've had an issue with it was Completely my fault. I was driving straight into the sun one day, not paying attention, and I just nailed a rock with my front tire right here. So my front lower A-arm bent, uh, the little gusset right here, if you can see that, it, it kind of creased and allowed this to push in, and my, my wheel ended up pushing out a little bit. So I just got another stock one that someone had taken off and replaced it. That was, again, completely my fault. The suspension on these things is very beefy for being stock um, from factory suspension. Yeah, so good thing about where we live is uh, a lot of people are running aftermarket suspensions and A-arms and um, HCRs and stuff like yeah. that. So there's an abundance of stock replacement parts that we can pick up fairly uh, very cheaply to exactly. replace some of this stuff. So Other than that, I haven't had anything to complain about no i think uh the tech's so, been great no glitches there cameras always work the shocks no no issues there. i mean 2400 miles and we just finally had to replace a, a wheel bearing right yep and so a wheel bearing. that's a normal maintenance thing. standard maintenance stuff 2400 miles on a wheel bearing in an off-road vehicle that's ridden 
primarily in the sand, man. That's yeah, that's pretty darn good, man. Can't complain about that. All right, big question. Lots of uh, lots of answers for this one, but uh, your machine's heavily, heavily, heavily modified. Uh, I can see maybe three stock parts from where I'm standing right now. <laughs> How's the aftermarket support for this thing? That was one of the reasons I chose the Turbo S over like a Pro XP or even a Can-Am. One of the reasons, I've already told you a few others, but the aftermarket support was already completely there. I can get whatever part I need for this from multiple companies. Yeah. When a new model comes out like the Pro XP, it took up until about right now, and it's been out for a year and a half or is it Has almost it two years almost two years yeah. for a company to make in my opinion nice looking doors yeah for example so being able to get doors have cages made that are already you know have good clean lines um, suspension replacement parts spring kits things like that that was a, an important factor in deciding engine stuff i mean clutch kits big turbos performance tuning yeah there, i mean there's there's a million things that, that are available for these turbo s models They've been running this same body style since what, 20... 2014? 14 little With front little end modification changes, yeah, in 16. lights and stuff like that, but yeah. But I mean, so it, it's a long, long run with this particular body style where there's a, you know, it, it ranges all the way from the, the stock naturally aspirated mm -hmm. motors all the way through the Turbo S where a lot of those parts are interchangeable and that, right. those cars have been around for a minute. Right, plus there's the, the fact that these are proven engines. The, the Turbo came out and 16. 2016, yeah. uh, they bumped up the horsepower a little bit, but it's the same engine, and so they've worked out the kinks. And so that was comforting to me, spending 31 grand as the MSRP on these cars, like knowing that I'm getting something reliable that's not yeah. gonna be in the shop all the time, and I'm not the guinea pig was important to me. Yeah, track record's impeccable with these things, man. Um, they had a little hiccup in 2016, I think, with the turbo models until they got yeah, it ironed out. Yeah, issues and, then, and stuff like that, clutching but issues. But ever since then, man, that thing's been rock solid. Yeah, no complaints on actual performance-wise as far as uh, engine clutching, transmission. Yep. And you're still on stock springs and, yep. and shocks and everything. I think that's, that's the one thing I'll change next car is I'll, I would do a spring kit if I would do it again, but, you know. Are you teasing us or something? Yeah. <laughs> all right man final thoughts would you do it again would you change your decision would you keep this car what if you could do it differently would you do it differently um overall i think it's the best car in the market for the terrains that i ride for needing four seats there isn't another option that i would rather have um the long travel awesome again i'll never go back to a 64 inch wide machine. Um, the electronic suspension, game changer. Um, the wheelbase again is ideal for any terrain. Um, as far as four seaters go, you can't beat this wheelbase. Yeah. It's got just enough room for little people in the back. <laughs> I hate driving for adults, so I got a lower cage and, and baby seats, but it's perfect for my family. Um, it performs well in the sand. It performs exceptional in the rocks especially since I did the gearing. Yeah. I would say that that's one thing that to make it the perfect all around machine, do gearing. So it's can, a must. Yeah. So you Game can, changer. You can up the tire size without worrying about clutching and burning belts and breaking belts and breaking yep. whatever. Um, would I do it again? I might be doing it again. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> there might be some big plans in the next couple weeks here, but I love this thing. I've got it just about dialed again. The only thing I would change if I built this car again, uh, starting 13 months ago, I would have done springs from day one. Just makes the ride that much better. Um, keeps you that much more comfortable, your wife <laughs> that much happier. Um, True statement. Also, I know a few people are gonna be asking me specific parts that they see in the video. I'll go ahead and attach my full build list to the description of the video. I'm not gonna do a bunch of links. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'll just attach the build list so you know what the parts are, what brands to look for. Yeah, we're gonna do some garage updates and uh, machine full overview videos here coming up soon. So yep. um, for those of you that can't wait for that, check the description below and uh, you'll be able to kind of get a link lead uh, into the videos coming up. And yeah, we've got some big plans for Ryan's car over there if you can see old blue. Yeah, there she is back in the back. So it's uh, it's gonna look radically different here in the next couple weeks, so. It might not be old blue for a while. It might <laughs> not be. Stay tuned for that one too. All right. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions about the car, about my experience, about the parts that I've installed, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to respond quickly. Also, if you made it this far, hopefully that means this video was good. Um, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, do something to show YouTube that this channel doesn't suck. So they'll actually help us push it out to a new audience. Thanks guys.